Hello, you're watching the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. Let's take a look at today's headlines. Will 100 migrants die in Mediterranean Sea? Ex Burkinabe leader sentenced for Thomas Sankara's murder. Bereni opposition demands removal of US base. And Italian forces raid trade union headquarters. In our first story, over 100 people have drowned and died in the central Mediterranean within one week. On April 2nd, more than 90 people died after being stranded for at least four days while trying to cross to Europe. This was just two days after four children and seven women were found dead in a rubber boat. They had reportedly spent several hours drifting off the coast of Libya. The remaining of the 126 passengers were intercepted by the Libyan Coast Guard. All survivors were forcibly returned to Libya, where they have likely been detained. Doctors Without Borders, or MSF, has condemned the negligence of Italy and Malta to assist boats in distress. It also denounced the European Union's withdrawal from search and rescue operations in the area. Meanwhile, the EU has trained, equipped and supported the Libyan Coast Guard to stop asylum seekers from reaching its borders. In 2021, over 32,000 migrants were intercepted and forced back to Libya. At least 3,000 have been captured so far this year. The violence in the central Mediterranean is taking place in tandem with anti-refugee policies across Europe. Among them is the UK government's widely condemned na Nationality and Borders Bill. The legislation suffered 12 defeats in the House of Lords this week. Peers rejected the government's attempt to divide asylum seekers into two classes based on how they arrived in the UK. Peers also rejected a provision which would have made it a crime to knowingly come to the UK without permission. A measure for the offshore processing of asylum seekers was also voted up. The bill will now head back to the House of Commons. Former Burkinabe President Blaise Kampare has been sentenced for the assassination of his predecessor, Thomas Sankara. The verdict was announced by a military tribunal on April 6, following a six-month trial. Thomas Sankara was a Marxist and a Pan-Africanist revolutionary who became Burkina Faso's president in 1983. Sankara rejected the imperialist policies of institutions like the IMF and the World Bank. His government introduced sweeping progressive reforms aimed at mass education, health care and the liberation of women. He also focused on the nationalization of land and resources. However, Sankara was assassinated four years later on October 15, 1987 in a coup led by Blaise Kampare. The revolutionary leader was 37 years old at the time. The coup was suspected to be backed by the United States and France. Kampaure subsequently came to power and remained president until he was ousted in the popular uprising in 2014. He has now been given a life sentence for the murder of his former friend and comrade in arms. Kampaure was tried in absentia alongside 13 others. Military prosecutors had initially sought a 30-year sentence for his crimes. Two other suspects have also been handed life sentences along with Kampaure. They include Gilbert D'Entre, who was among the leaders of the 1987 coup, and Hyacinth Kafando, who led Kampaure's guards. Three other defendants have been acquitted. Eight have been handed prison terms ranging from 3 to 20 years. An opposition group in Bahrain has condemned the presence of the U.S. Navy's Fifth Fleet in the country. The February 14 Revolution Youth Coalition has called for the removal of the massive U.S. naval base in Jaffer. The facility is located 8 kilometers southeast of the capital of Manama. The coalition stated that one of the most important missions of the base was to preserve the Al Khalifa dynasty. It added that the base had trained more foreign mercenaries to suppress the 2011 popular uprising. The mobilizations were met with a severe crackdown on critics and dissidents. Scores of activists were arrested and imprisoned, among them is Abdul Jalil al Singhase who has been on hunger strike for over 270 days to protest the conditions of his detention. Independent news outlets and opposition political parties were also banned. Despite this repression, Bahrain has witnessed regular protests to demand a just and representative political system. The 14 February Revolution Coalition has also denounced the normalization of ties with Israel. 
It argued that Bahrain has since become a leading center for reconnaissance and spying against Iran and resistance groups. The group has stated that the problem today was not with Iran's nuclear program. Rather, it was with Iran's geopolitical position, its threat to imperialism and its support for the Palestinian cause. The coalition has demanded the expulsion of all Israeli and U.S. officers, including military advisors from Bahrain. And for our final story, outrage has spread across Italy after Gendarmerie forces raided the headquarters of the USB Italia trade union. The Carabinieri conducted the operation on April 6th, claiming to search for weapons. They stated that they had received an anonymous phone call. The forces reportedly found a gun wrapped in cellophane immersed in the flush tank of a toilet in the office. USB and progressive groups have denounced the raid as a staged event to villainize the trade union. USB has been at the forefront of struggles against the neoliberal policies of Prime Minister Mario Draghi. It has also organized anti-war protests against the use of Italian ports for arms shipments. Most recently, dock workers at the port of Genoa observed a 24-hour strike in March. The action coincided with the arrival of the Saudi Bahari ship. It was reportedly carrying the U.S. weapons bound for Ukraine. The Genoan port has been a major transit point for ships carrying weapons to Ukraine and Yemen. USB workers in Pisa also refused to load weapons onto civilian plane. On paper, the aircraft was supposed to carry humanitarian assistance to Ukraine. In response to the raid, USB stated that the only weapons it used were strike demonstrations and struggles. The union is gearing up for a massive protest on April 22nd against the anti-worker policies of the Draghi administration. And that's all for today's episode. For more such stories, visit our website at www.peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thank you for watching.